Okay, yeah. So, when I was grinding off camera, I started grinding in this area off camera because, you know, there were enemies that were a lot more fitting for my level here until I started getting over leveled for them and I started venturing around the world until I found a better place to grind, which I evidently did. But throughout the time that I was grinding in this area, this NPC that I was supposed to follow for this main quest to get to like the base of the sword was just running around like all confused, like, where the heck are you going? You know, essentially. So yeah, we were supposed to follow you. So what was happening in the story is Monica came and met up with us and was like, yeah, we're part of the Lost Numbers. We live in the city that's at like the base of the sword. You should uh, come follow us. I, also, I'm Vandom's daughter. And at first I uh, found it really, like at the time I found it really jarring when uh, Noah was like, wait, you know Vandom? Because it's like, yeah, she just said that she was Vandom's daughter. But then I thought about it later and I was like, oh yeah, the whole concept of like having kids is like a whole foreign concept in this world because everyone, you know, comes from the queen and to the queen you shall return. So, you know, I don't know if, son and daughter is even like a word in their dictionary so you know it was foreign to Noah and he was like wait you know Vandom so it actually makes sense and we were given eye patches because apparently eye patches are the way to oh look it automatically put them back on cool all right we have our eye patches back on the corresponding eyes for each side because apparently that's like the dress code in the uh in the sword here in Galahad Fortress I mean it's probably been a long time since it was called Galahad Fortress so I doubt that it's called Galahad Fortress anymore And how are we meant to get to the city from here? Um, yeah, this is a dead end. Wrong. You are wrong! Look how foolish you are! Let's use the secret entrance! Meh! A door! This leads into the great sword. The city's this way. Also, because Monica has eye patch on the left eye, that means that she's a Agnes character, a Xenoblade 2 character then seems like what a masterful disguise huh when Ethel said there was nothing of interest in the sword march guess she never found this hey you guys done can we get going all right well I guess we're entering the Makana sword all right neat Mother and father of foreign concepts to him so this game does have the same lore like prehistory story I love a lot yeah I guess it must be Considering the prehistory story, everyone seems to reproduce, reproduce asexually by entering a haystack like a Assassin's Creed assassin. There's an ether channel here, really? Don't mind if I do. Look how sandy it is here. My goodness. Who filled the sword full of sand? Heck is going on here? Yoink. I will take things here. Thermal parts. At least we don't have to deal with, you know, bazillion mech on all over the place that want to kill us like the last time we were at the sword you know that was certainly something and four surprise quests that are permanently missable if you don't do them at like the brief time that you have in sword valley there Ooh, dang it never mind guys i'm not jacking your crap yet i'll do it later see you tie on see ya man all right well i almost pressed a button to try and break this box just from like the last stream of playing Near Replicant. You know, I almost did it. Yeah, the sword is looking a bit different. So looking a decent bit different. I saw a little smidge of this from when my cousin was showing me his file, but not a whole lot. So, Guernica, that's... that wrinkly guy. Back then. Yeah. You said you were his daughter. What's that mean? I completely forgot. You don't understand the concept of parenthood. I'll explain later. Later meaning in the city? That's where the elevator's taking us. <sighs> You'll be needing those eye patches now. And what for? Those put a spanner in Mobius's recon. 
Mobiuses? When you become Ouroboros, your irises change. And they start emitting a weak radio signal. And so, we're blocking that signal. With these things? What about yours? Are you Ouroboros too? <sighs> we'll go with that. Sorry? You see, we're bound by Ouroboros blood. Just what are you? <laughs> We're so high up! What a view! I've never seen anything like it. Certainly takes your breath away. Can you save your observations for later? Come on! Great Swords Hilt. Oh! <laughs> well, the Makata Sword is definitely looking a lot different than the last time that we saw it. Also, I assume that that's Agnes Castle over there. The Xenoblade 2 castle? Oh, I so want to do it. <laughs> Look at that sword. I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> probably. Just because of a bit of a bar fight. If there was anybody in this group to start a bar fight, it would definitely be Uni. A rare doodah right here. A rare doodah right here. Your way, corridor. This dizzying height. Yeah, my me. goodness gracious. Looking down makes me feel faint. I guess the sword being vertical now rather than horizontal, having the hilt be up this high, it's gonna get a bit colder higher up. Huh. Yeah, this is a. This is certainly very different, huh? I like it. I do very much like how Xenoblade takes established ideas and does new things with them. Entrance is up ahead. Oh, and then it just teleports us over here. So like, yeah, so we just don't get this bit mapped. Oh my, what, what is that? Huh. That wasn't Galahad Fortress, was it? Like the weird kind of circular bit near the hilt of the sword that kind of is similar to the Monado. I, th I think that is, isn't it? Because like, you know, the, uh, the Bionis just used like its actual Monado. Whereas, uh, you know, the Makonis had an actual physical thing that also kind of represented its Monado being, you know, the great sword here. So Every that ring the there day. is kind of the uh, kind of the thing that the Monado symbols would I guess appear on except for the Makonis, you know, I guess or something like that. But yeah, fortunately, Nintendo still has one RPG series that takes established ideas and does new things with them. Yeah, yeah. It's not even a first party Nintendo thing. It's a second party thing here with Monolith Soft. Thank goodness Monolith Soft has given, you know, the creative freedom that they are. I feel like if Nintendo had you know the complete say and you know shadowing over everything that happens in this kind of game it would not be the way that it is i'm gonna take the eye patches off now you won't need them past this point uh, oh right and you're sure about that city's got some signal jamming tech that functions just like the eye patches 
Locking detection by Mobius. We're safe inside. Yeah, my word. I suppose that must be the reason why they haven't been able to discover the city thus far. You got that right. This place is our last re redoubt? I've never seen that word before. And our sole haven in this word world. But as soon as we step outside, Mobius are all over us. Like a bad wool sweater. So what I'm saying is, don't forget your eye patches when you're out and about. That's all. I hear you, loud and clear. Will remember. Okay. Interesting. Because Monolithsoft is owned by Nintendo. Ah. Uh, okay. But, at least they're still giving creative freedom, you know? At least there's that. And she despawned. Wow. It's just called City. This is the... City. It sure took us long enough. We shouldn't relax just yet, though. Why the spark not? We don't even know if they're really our allies yet. We can't get complacent. Still on guard, huh? Unlike some of you daydreamers, yes. I'd like to believe them. Their eyes, they look the same as his. They said they opposed Mobius, didn't they? It should be okay then, to trust them. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. Gotcha. Bloody sparks. Why do I bother? Thank you, Tyon, for looking out for us. Yeah, sure, whatever. I'll follow your lead. But please, stay vigilant. Of course we will. New colony entries have been registered. Alright, neato. Colony registered city. Are you- wait, are you There's getting mixed up with uh, Breath of the Wild by chance and said Skyward Sword there? I don't recall Monolith Soft helping with Skyward Sword, but they did help with Breath of the Wild, very much helping make the world of that. I think I, uh, such as Skyward Sword or Breath of the Wild. Okay, you did mention Breath of the Wild there. I don't recall- help with a skyward sword maybe i didn't hear about that one but yeah breath of the wild i know and i believe you are right about some splatoon 2 stuff as well i believe that some of them are helping with breath of the wild 2's world as well if i recall also so i guess this is basically like the new egg Neartha in a way pretty sure they also helped in skyward sword huh if monolith soft had been the ones that uh made skyward sword hd however that would have probably been a very different game if Xenoblade Definitive Edition is anything to go by. <laughs> hey, like, that's neither here nor there. This is beyond anything we could have imagined. Yeah, intriguing here. Also, I know that this isn't where Agniertha would have been originally. Like, Agniertha was in the Makana's head, whereas this is the Makana's sword. But, you know, it's still a similar area, both parts of the Makana's. And, you know, similar-ish kind of style. It kind of... It kind of makes me feel like if the Homs of Xenoblade 1 had made a settlement within the Makanis, is what it kind of feels like. But yeah, all this stuff loves their cloudy worlds by the Kaidos at 1 and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 at 1 too. I mean, yeah, they do love their cloudy places, that's for sure. Quite a huh. Look at all these books. It's a pretty cool place. Ouroboros. Ouroboros, yeah. So they're Ouroboros? And they're from Kevis. And Agnes. But they're just a bunch of kids. Watch yourselves. There could be secret spies. It's over. This place will be a war zone. They're all whispering about us. I feel we're not exactly welcome here. Uninvited guests, one might say. They're the ones who led us here. Oh, hey. Doesn't she look similar to the Mobius we fought at Colony 4? It's true. Wrinkly prude faces abound here. Mananas by tiny people too! It's whole undiscovered race! No. They must be... humans just like us. So you're Ouroboros, eh? Huh? You've got, what, one or two years left? Some hope you are. Don't know why Van Damme wasted that power on you. 
What was he thinking? <sighs> What's your problem? Mind your manners. Let me introduce you. These were our Ouroboros candidates. They trained relentlessly to fight against Mobius. Each and every one of them. That includes Shania there. Candidates? You happy? That you stole Ouroboros from us? <sighs> All right, that's enough. Whatever the reason, the old man did choose him. To be fair, they have gone against quite a few Mobius already. They're the real thing, all right. You heard Shania's reports. What reports? I had her monitor your actions with extreme scrutiny. All the way from the valley. Huh? Since way back then? <laughs> Together, we are united in our cause. Miss Bangdon. Uh, all right then. Please, it's not their fault. They're not a bad lot, really. That's easy for you to say. Well, that was awkward as all ash. We've made some new friends. Huh, <laughs> have we? Are you sure we've made some new friends? So the machine that Vandom used that gave the party war Boris, it was meant to be used on some people from the city here that aren't we're bound by friends. like the 10 term thing we're Bob? You, um, you said that you were monitoring us earlier. So is that why, why you stormed the castle? After the Ouroboros stone activated, Shania relayed the info straight back to us. So I've been looking for a chance to contact you. Oh, really? We reckoned that you would just head straight here. What we did not expect was for you to dive straight into the heart of the enemy's base. Ah. Uh. I was flipping out. Your actions were so reckless. I started to wonder if our saviors were just a bunch of raving lunatics. It kind of looked that way. That's a little too harsh. <laughs> Sorry, poor choice of words. How about hotheads? Yeah, that's not a lot better. Still, it helped us complete one of our primary objectives. Securing a number of growth modules. What are those? I'll show you. You'll find it quite interesting. It's the very reason why we fight. I guess we're just gonna be getting like we're little bits friends. of story? Here and there as we follow along and see bits of the bits of the city. <laughs> Shion is now your friend. Are you sure about that? Tales of Rise was a special game, wasn't it? <laughs> Alright, so it seems like a yeah, a big city here. Not just some small scale thing like we have with all the colonies around the world. We're we not going in there? Guess we're not going oh, we're going this way. Oh, We're now more or less above the sword's hilt guard. Even this place was once ravaged by war. By Kevis and Agnes. Has the war really spread this far? There's even more. More husks underneath. This right here is what the world is really like. Designed to keep us shackled. Keep us shackled? Oh, so now that was a uh, 
certainly a bit of a sight. I guess you can't really tell from here. It might just be simple textures from here, but... Jeebus. Yeah, that is certainly one way to show know. You know that part war having the happened there. Earlier. You aren't thinking about sending those on, are you? Guess we're never gonna get the answer there. Hello, the sandwich. Aren't those cradles? Your so called cradles are the growth modules that birthed you. You were conscripted from birth, trained to kill one another ruthlessly and steal each other's life. That life energy pours into the flame clocks, becoming the fuel that feeds Mobius. In order for Mobius to exist, they must continue to claim life energy. And these cradles right here, they're used to recycle your lives. Ethel. Yeah. You live your lives in servitude so that Mobius can exist. And even in death, there's no release. You'll just keep getting recycled. No way. There's your shackles. Soldiers bound by Mobius' shackles are destined only for mutual destruction. Those who lose their lives in battle, they're reborn anew. They wake from a castle cradle, a blank slate without a scrap of their former memories. Wait, then that husk I saw. But if we keep your lives bound to the bodies, as we're doing here, they're of no use to them. This way, we can whittle away at their power. So you've been doing this over and over again, then? That's right. You don't want to know for how long, believe me. And yet, the price we pay to take down just a handful of Mobius is immeasurable. The city's residents, we're all descendants of the first Ouroboros. The first Ouroboros? What's a descendant? Uh... Right. That's not a word you'd have any use for either, I suppose. Better to see for yourselves. Come, I'll show you. Well, okay, so it's not quite cloning, as I, uh, as I theorized before this game came out. But yeah, it's respawning. They invented the ability to respawn. Though, I still feel like there might be something going on with cloning, considering we've seen console N and seen that console N is basically Noah and has Noah's sword. And we saw at the end of the last chapter that someone that looked just like Mew came up and talked to the person that looks just like Noah. So, in addition to the respawning, I thought that was like an either channel for a second. I was like, what's going on over here? In addition to the respawning, there is also either cloning going on or time travel or multi-dimensional shiz, something like that. One of the above. Cloning, time travel, or multi-dimensional stuff. One of those things has got to be the case. So cloning's still on the table, I feel like, right? But yeah, that also just arrived you uh, remind you of the same genetic pool of Xeoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, when I first saw those uh those thing robobs in you know, the Queen's Castle. It reminded me of the life hold in Xenoblade Chronicles X, where it's like, it has the schematics to build whatever, and, you know, it can build whatever, essentially. I appreciate the follow there, Nocturnal Blue. I appreciate it. The place where new humans are born? What, over in here? In on the or... Process. Where are we? This is a maternity ward. Maternity? Doctor, may I? Come. 
It's so teensy tiny, but it move. Much rejoicing! Uh, it's okay to touch her. Gently now. She's so warm. Place one finger. in her palm. <gasps> hey, Santa! Look at this! Do you need to try it too? Mimi, it's incredible. L let me have a turn. <laughs> this is incredible, Senna. Funny, right? But this is human beings' true nature. If you want the ins and outs, go and ask the doctor. All right then, lads and lasses. Who wants to know how babies are made? Hmm. Well, you're in for a surprise. Buckle up! This is how it should be. This is human nature. We are born defenseless, grow up. Then those who find a spouse create new life together, age, then return to the earth. Thank you. I mean it. Monica. What was that word you used? Spouse? A partner in romance. Ro... The feeling of having someone very precious to you. That'd be one way of putting it.
You'll understand too someday. It might be that you already do. <sighs> Remembrance stones. Okay, well... <laughs> I'm gonna, sometimes when I turn the chat back on after a long set of cutscenes, sometimes it will show all the conversation that happened over there, like during the cutscenes. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm kind of glad it didn't this time, considering the discussions about the old man in that room that was like, who wants to know how babies are made? I, <laughs> the first thing that I thought there is, this old man might have a bit of a ulterior motive here, you know, is the is the first thing that I thought. And that the characters were gonna walk out of that clinic just like completely shaken and scarred for life. Records are kept here. Tyon, look. Hmm. It looks the same as the one before. Who are they? The first Ouroboros. The Founders, we call them. The first Ouroboros. That one, she looks a bit like Mimi. Look at this, he's got Noah's chin. And the others... Well, don't look like anyone. Tell us about them. Long, long ago, they gained the power of Ouroboros. It let them match Mobius blow for blow. The city folk you see here, we're all descended from them. Bound by their blood. Mm. It was the Queens, so they say. Kevis and Agnes. Their powers united, created Ouroboros. Ouroboros are the only ones that can take down a Mobius. Although, there can only be six Ouroboros alive at one time. By activating the stone's cage here, those with aptitude can become Ouroboros. Only six? Why so few of them? I get it. That's why they got so upset. Finally clicked? There's only so many seats and stones. The one that my father was moving. It took a long time to be found. I think I'm finally getting the gist of this whole Ouroboros deal. But the queens? Not those sham figureheads in the castles. The real queens. Yes, real queens. I knew that soulless piece of clockwork junk wasn't the real deal. Does that mean our queen is false too? Hmm. We're still trying to pinpoint the true queens. They're out there somewhere, sleeping. What for? Why else? To take our world back from Mobius and set things to rights. The true queens will help us there. Hang on a bleeding second. Ouroboros were born, like, generations ago, right? But you said the queens are sleeping. Are there humans who can even live that long? Now that, I don't know too much about. Then what do you know? Well, the legend goes that both of the queens, their lifespans are supposed to be incomparably longer than ours. And your opinion, your hopes on that? At the moment, that's about all we can do. All right. So, when the world is back to rights, then what? The people you've seen here, the way they live their lives, that could be everyone. Babies, children, adults, 
the old. They're all a part of nature's cycle. And that would go for us too. Hmm. There'll be more to life than just fighting to survive. We'll weave the tale that we were always meant to tell. Don't give up. Ten years? You kids deserve better. The only thing that can change all this is the will of Ouroboros. You kids and your love. Though, some of us around here still ain't too keen on the idea. What? So, those people from before? They're happy living in the moment. As long as they can hide away and cover their eyes, they don't give a damn about the rest. So our lives mean nothing to them? If they can't see or hear you, then as far as they're concerned, you don't even exist. Closing their eyes to what's in front of them. A lot of folks here think that way. But that's... That's just like Mobius. Then the only difference is whether or not they benefit directly. You catch on quick. I can see why my dad chose you guys. But the will of the Founders, it lives on in us warriors. Mobius can't reign forever. If we can continue freeing young folk like you, Maybe life can get back to how it should be. That would be best for all of us. For sure. I'm with you. I think we'd have to be lunatics not to believe you, after what you've shown us. <laughs> I believe it too. Seeing how you live your lives, it made me feel really envious. Feeling that warmth, part of nature's cycle. We need to protect that. I agree. It was so... precious. Wah! No voices here. Shania. More walking to do? This is the last stretch. Let's get you to the dorms. Heck yeah! Alright, Mobius Warning Level. Oh! Kevin's and Agnes Warning Levels have combined to form a single Mobius Warning Level. So these are the so -called huh. children. And yeah, I, uh, whoops, I don't want to answer on the cam there. And yeah, I meant Minoth by, uh, by that. Indeed they do. So yeah, Melia and Nia would both have like super here. long lifespans and such. So I mean, so the reason why we don't really see any, you know, proper high entia from back then around anymore is, you know, one, we only got to like this place here just now that has, you know, people that live normally as opposed to being in that weird cycle there. And two, all the pure-blooded high entia were turned into Telethia in Xenoblade Chronicles 1. So the only, uh, so the only high entity that exists anymore are the half-breeds that have the smaller wings like Uni. You look like Shulk slash have his like outfit-ish essentially. Except maybe without the things on the lower bit of the legs. Out of the way, Exa Alexandria! I'm trying to have a good look at uh, Mr. Dudo here. Kind of looks like Kind of looks like Shulk with that one, uh, armor accessory that went on the forehead that was like- Oh wait, I'm thinking of Xenoblade Chronicles X for that one armor accessory, aren't I? I might be, yeah. Were there things like that in Xenoblade? Well, I don't know. But the weird goggle thing where Bob's. But yeah. But yeah, so you can keep dreaming that we might see the Zekanator? Maybe. If only one of these look like the Zekanator. That's not, is it? No. Alright, mmm. I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know if this is even a... Even meant to be Shulk there. Could just be like a descendant of Shulk, potentially, if they were the first Ouroboros. Also, if there can only be six Ouroboros alive at one time, I find it interesting how they all, you know, kind of look similar to our party members in one way or another. Like, this is closest to Noah. 
This is closest to, um... I guess this would be closest to Tyon, probably. Um, you'd be closest to Senna. You're... Or wait, maybe you're closest to Senna? And this is uh, closest to Uni. Closest to Lands. Closest to Mio. Design-wise. You know. Hmm. But yeah. If you didn't know who Minoth was, haven't seen Torna's DLC story, thought you meant the other guy from the main story that was part of Jin's group. Oh, uh, no. Uh, yeah. Freaking Minoth, the dude with the, uh, dual guns there. So he was briefly in, like, Chapter 3 of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, where he's like this old man, he's dying and he's coughing and stuff. But in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna, he was one of the main party members where he's, like, all young and hip with the kids and stuff. You know, so... <laughs> So there was that. Nice, the stairs are actually stairs. Yeah. Cool. Quite a weight to carry. If this were something like a Pokemon game, it would just be a slope with alternating colors to give the illusion of stairs without actually being stairs. But yeah, should be. And so should the Aegises, right? Assuming they didn't become mortal. This is the dorm for young lost number soldiers. You can sleep here while you're in the city. You can ask that guy about your rooms. I don't work here. I'm just chilling, waiting for a friend. Oh, and sadly, there's no kitchen in the building. A lot of the single soldiers eat at the Mishiba canteen. But if you want to do your own cooking, feel free to use that empty plot of land over there. Got it. Thank you, Monica. Tomorrow, we have a lot to discuss. Agreed. How shall we arrange that? Meet me in the Lost Numbers War Room. It's a place down the lift from near the Praetorian Hill. Praetorian? Like the, uh, the Praetorium from Xeoblade 2? Uh, Praetorian Hill, which we passed on the way here. I'll let you know closer to the time. Oh, before I forget. You're free to explore the city as you will. Is that really okay? I said we weren't hostile, right? I thought you'd be pleased not to have me breathing down your necks. No, we're grateful. Thanks for everything. Also, if there can only... If there can only be, like, six Ouroboros alive at a time, and... I guess they don't have another machine. I was about to say, like, why are they so ticked off about us being Warbores when they're just, when they could instead just be like, ah, just fight until you keel over, and then the moment that you keel over will become Warbores from there. But I guess it's not so easy if those, you know, machines, the Warbores, whatever the heck thing we're about, aren't exactly easy to come by. I suppose. Training ground. Lost numbers are short on snipers, right? It's just that I've been considering changing my role, so I'll become a super secret sniper and stuff. Changing your blade again? Really sure you found the right role this time? <laughs> Changing your blade? That makes me think about, like, Xeoblade Chronicles X. Because it's funny, you know, the uh, characters slash weapons in Xenoblade 2 were called blades. The weapons that you wield in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 here are called blades. And the, uh, and the place that you worked for in Xenoblade Chronicles X was called Blade, and you had, like, the various different divisions. So them saying like change your blade there makes me think of like changing divisions in Xenoblade, uh, Xenoblade X. Wow, nice puddle of water for a Switch game. Wow, very very nice. What Monolith Soft is able to pull off on the freaking gaming tablet is honestly astounding. Like I have such respect for Monolith Soft. All right, well let's see here. Let's see, Lost Numbers Dormitory. So I guess we'll chat here. Room's already for you now. How about getting some rest? I guess so. But yeah. Blades that use blades while fighting along their blades. Yeah, I guess it's that. Um, impossible. The Switch can't handle that. Impossible. Yeah. Exactly my thoughts there. Sure. 